Welcome, everybody. We really appreciate you tuning in from all over the world. Uh, my name is Mike Kaput. I am the Chief Content Officer here at Marketing AI Institute. I'm joined today by Justin Canning, who heads up the agency industry team at Accio. And Accio provides AI-powered analytics and predictive modeling to agencies and businesses. And they're using generative AI to really help your clients get intelligent insights and make intelligent predictions from their data using just a few clicks. We're going to talk a lot more about Accio as we move forward here. But first, I wanted to quickly mention what we're here to do today. Now, at Marketing AI Institute, we have been actually, Justin, if you don't mind going back for one sec, I do sure. want to highlight one point in here. Uh, you know, we've been working with AI leaders like Accio and others since way back in 2016. And our whole goal is to make AI approachable and actionable for marketers and business leaders. And this webinar and ones like it are one of the big ways we really do that. And today's webinar is really what we call an AI in action webinar. It's a special series of webinar we do where we have hands-on demonstrations of AI technology at work and showing how it can create real-world outcomes for you in your work as a marketer, advertiser, business person. So in today's webinar, we're actually going to show you how AI can unlock all these superpowers when we use it for ad data analysis using Accio. We're going to show you exactly how Accio's AI works. Justin's going to actually walk through the platform, and he's going to show you how you can benefit from it in your business. Now, you're going to actually see what's going on in the tool. So we're super, super excited for this one. Now, Justin, if you wouldn't mind moving the slide forward, I've got a couple housekeeping items here before we dive in. The first is an event I want to make you aware of that's coming up very soon called our AI for Writers Summit. Now, this is a half-day virtual event. It has a free registration option. You can go to AIWriterSummit.com. This is a half-day of programming from Marketing AI Institute and a number of AI leaders tackling anything and everything related to using AI in your writing process. We ran this event a year ago and had about 4,000 people register. This is a huge topic given how much generative AI can create value for writers and how it's disrupting kind of business as usual in any writing related tasks. So we are going to dive into all sorts of interesting angles of how you can actually make AI work for you as a writer at this event. So go ahead and join us at that. Also, we have our AI Academy for Marketers has a number of new offerings that I would highly recommend you go ahead and check out at marketingaiinstitute.com forward slash education. We offer a number of on-demand education options. Our piloting AI course just got fully, fully updated for 2024. It was just re-released with a ton of new material. So if you are looking to learn A to Z, how to get started with AI, we've got about eight hours of course content in that offering that you can do on demand. Coming in early April, we have Scaling AI, which is going to help uh, AI and business leaders actually scale the usage of the technology within their organization. And AI Mastery Membership is a brand new offering we've got that is a completely reimagined yearly membership to help you understand AI ongoing throughout the year with a number of different special features and events that you get as part of your membership. So go ahead and check all of those out. And last but not least, Justin, on the next slide, we have our Marketing AI Conference coming up. This is September 10th through the 12th here in Cleveland, Ohio, our home base. It is a three-day in-person event that brings together our entire community, hundreds if not thousands of marketers and business leaders and experts coming together to share knowledge and exchange information and make connections around AI in marketing and business. We had about 750 people last year in 2023. We're expecting probably about double that this year in September. So if you go ahead and use the code webinar100, you'll save 100 bucks at checkout. Now, before I hand things over to Justin, I want to have two final reminders for everyone in the audience. 
The first, I know we'll ask, I know it's on your mind, this webinar is being recorded and it will be provided to you on demand within about 24 hours. Our team will email a link out of the recording. So if you join late, if you miss anything, if you have to leave early, do not worry. We're going to send a recording your way. Last but not least, we're going to do some Q&A at the end of the webinar. So go ahead and put your questions in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. This is a dedicated Q&A option on Zoom, the platform we're using, at the bottom of your screen. If you drop your question in there, it has a far better chance of being seen and answered on the webinar than if you put it in the chat section. Sometimes, you know, it's awesome to see all the conversations happening in chat, and we certainly encourage those. But if you do have a specific question you want us to see, the Q&A section is the best place for that. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Justin. He's going to tell us a little bit more about his background and then walk us through how Accio can actually help us do ad data analysis. Take it away, Justin. Yeah, everybody. Thanks so much, Mike. I uh, appreciate the introduction and, and thanks to the, the Institute here for uh, chatting with us today. A uh, little about me. Why are, why am I, I talking today? So I'm the former head of sales at AdRoll. AdRoll is a programmatic DSP that specializes in retargeting, prospecting, attribution products. Um, in, in my roles there, I spent a lot of time managing client campaigns, doing the reporting, optimizing campaigns which means I spent way more time than I'd like to admit in Excel, as I'm sure a lot of you can relate to. Um, currently, I'm leading the agency industry team at Accio. Uh, so what are we here trying to, to solve for? Um, today, no one is really leveraging the full value of their data, and that's mainly due to two reasons, the skill gap and the effort barrier. Very few people in an organization, it's usually your data science or BI teams, have the technical skills to do complex data work and even less people have the time due to enormous effort it takes to actually run complex analysis, you know, couple that with a laundry list of things that you have to do for your clients on a regular basis. Um, this means that there isn't massive opportunity for businesses that can enable analysts and operators, the people that actually work with the data on a regular basis to help take their client relationships to the next level if they can get more out of their data. So in my AM days at AdRoll, you know, my clients could see some high level metrics about their campaigns in our dashboards, which I'm sure a lot of you can relate to, but, you know, they really lacked the insight into what was driving performance. Why did their ROI drop last week? Which campaign led to a massive spike in sales that we just saw? So when I would get these questions, it'd be like a fire drill trying to get answers. Either I had to wait for my offshore team or my internal BI team to help, or I'd spend hours in an Excel sheet trying to do the analysis myself. And I was on the sales team. I'm not a data analyst. So that wasn't really my job. So my client waited for answers. I spent way too much time in spreadsheets, but all both parties really wanted to do was discuss strategy and find more ways to win customers. So why did we build Accio to make this complex data analysis easy and accessible to everyone? So generative AI as a whole has unlocked a lot of value for, for marketers and everyone. So whether it's writing campaign briefs, project plans, um, setting up pro uh, client presentations has never been easier, but the AI data analysis world is still very largely untapped. There's a big reason for that. Large language models don't really do math. So, Accio is the data analysis platform for marketing agencies. We're AI native, and allow, that allows your team to do everything from cleaning and preparing data to analyzing data and generating reports to building predictive models in an easy and automated way. So similarly to how you'd use GPT for some of the reasons I mentioned before, now if you have a question, you ask, you get actionable insights. It's that easy. So we're designed to supercharge your team internally and to provide self-serve tools for your customers externally so that you and your clients can get more out of their data than you, than you knew was even there. Um, I'll do a deeper dive now into how this translates into winning new prospects and more deeply engaging with the ones that you already have. We have four core product pillars that guide how our platform enables your team. The first is brand and build. Everything I'm gonna show you today can be rebranded as your own and built on top of. So you can add more AI tools to your tech stack, and we do this with a very seamless onboarding process. Access and prepare. So you can pull in data from wherever it lives, and we'll go through the different integrations that we have in a bit, and you can prepare it using natural language prompts. So no more formulas in Excel, no more SQL code to do a lot of data cleanup. 
It's quick and easy cleaning in our platform. The third is chat and chart. So you can dig into your data by simply asking what you want to know. Um, so this makes your whole team data analyst using natural language prompts to, to do an uh, analysis, or you can let your clients do the exploring by embedding this within, by embedding our chat tools within your current tech stack. And finally, analyze and optimize. So you can use our predictive engine to build machine learning models in just a few clicks. So you can find hidden gems in your data to uncover how to best act on it. And you can use this for everything from campaign optimization, lead scoring, revenue forecasting, media mix modeling. If you have data and you have a problem to solve, we can help tackle it. So we can help in, in your pitches by you know, showing your, your prospective customers that you're at the forefront of technology with AI for everything data analysis with the option for your customers to use these tools in a self-serve fashion. Uh, you can build quick custom data visual, visualizations, even do it on the fly as you're talking to your prospects uh, to help show them that this can all be implemented right away from day one. So you can hit the ground running with any new prospects. For your current customers, um, from a prediction standpoint, you know, don't dwell on the past, focus on the future. You can automatically surface patterns in historical data to predict future outcomes and to generate key insights in a fraction of the time that it would currently take. And we can eliminate wasted time, wasted spend, wasted opportunities. So stop testing things out the old fashioned way um, and use predictive analytics to optimize campaigns more efficiently and see into blind spots so you can get the best results for your clients. So let's jump into the product here. Um, we're going to walk through a dummy data, data set that I've created, um, obviously using our actual client data is out of the question, and it's really hard to find a, a good marketing data set out there on, on the internet. But um, So you'll need to ignore a, a couple of things around like model accuracy and high ROAS figures. But what we're going to do here, we're going to showcase how to use Accio to prepare the data for analysis. We're going to actually do some of the analysis and build reports and dashboards. And then we're going to build a predictive model and chat through some driving factor analysis. Um, throw questions in the chat. Happy to answer them afterwards. But let's begin. All right. So when you first log into Accio here, you're going to see a series of projects. A project is your kind of end-to-end -end one data set and doing everything from cleaning to analyzing to uh, running predictions on the data. and we can bring data into Accio using some of our integration partners. You can see um, uh, data warehousing tools like Google BigQuery and Snowflake. Uh, we have Google Sheets, Google Analytics, and uh, Google Ads coming out in a few weeks. CRM platforms like Salesforce and HubSpot and other SQL servers and, and, and MongoDB. Um, can also upload a, a CSV or an Excel file. So um, whether you're working on a, a massive data project or, or something really like quick and easy like a, a CSV, very easy to get data into the platform and go to work from there. So the, the, the project that I'll be working out of here, again, a dummy data set, but I have some, some high level campaign uh, metrics here. So you can see I've broken it out by campaign type. We've got retargeting, CRM, prospecting campaigns. We have the ad placement, uh, which medium we're serving on, Instagram, Google Display, Facebook, um, from device standpoint, desk desktop versus mobile. Um, and we have some high level metrics, your spend, impressions, views, clicks, and conversions. A little bit more info on the ad type here, a lifestyle versus an infographic, um, and a date field here. So any, any other fields you have about your, your customer's data can be very easily added in here. This is just an example data set. So you can pull in these massive files from you know Facebook, the likes of uh, Google, et cetera. Um, this is just for, for demo's sake, but you get some quick exploratory data analysis on every field in the data set as well. So you can see you know just some quick distributions for any numerical fields, breakdowns of different categories, histograms for, for date fields. And if you click into each column, you can see correlations between that column and every other column in the data set. So from a conversion standpoint, we can see that clicks, views, spend, campaign type, all heavily correlate with, the, with conversions here. Um, so just some quick insights into what's actually in the data. Now, you can use our chat data prep tool here to do any transformations of the data. So whether you want to add in new features, you want to do some filtering, um, any cleanup of the data you can do. So some things we'll try out here. 
Uh, you'll notice there's spend impressions used, et cetera, but there's no CPM, CPC, CTR, you know, the, the, some of the more important metrics that you want to factor in here. So um, every prompt that you submit, we're going to show you the AI interpretation of that prompt. So you can make sure that the AI is understanding the ask correctly. And then you'll have the option to apply or cancel it out. Now, for some things like CPM, CPC, et cetera, AI is going to understand what those means and it's going to do those calculations for you. You may need to specify things for, for things that are a little less generic than, than in an example like this, but um, you know, really easy to just uh, get these new columns added. And a lot of this can be automated if you're making the same transformations to the same data sets on a regular basis. And you can see, I even asked this to be rounded to the nearest third decimal. So here's a preview of the new columns that we have. I'm going to click apply here and it's going to add these to the data set. All right, now other things we can try out here. Let's remove outliers from the CPC column. You can see here from a, a distribution standpoint, it's pretty uneven. We have a lot weighted towards like the $1 mark. We have some in the 150 range. So let's remove those outliers. We all know there's those times where, you know, be it click fraud, website down, you know, a, a break in one of our media buying platforms. There's going to be outliers here. So let's get those out of the data so we can clean this up a little bit. And the outlier uh, calculation, you can specify exactly how you want to define outliers, but um, you can see here in the CPC column, it's now smoothed out. So we're now between one and 10. So I'm going to apply that transform. What else do we want to do here? So we can also bucket the date range into different quarters. So you can see you have dates uh, listed on a, a daily basis here. If we want to add an additional column here to automatically bucket all of these into, into different quarters, we can make that ask. And I gave an example here uh, just for the, to show the formatting that I wanted, but you know, this is great if, you're, if you wanted to just download this data set after this and you've got everything really easily broken out into, uh, into different timeframes here. And, you know, we've got a lot of data here. Let's focus solely on retargeting campaigns here. So I'm just going to filter for retargeting. And that's going to remove my CRM and prospecting campaigns from this list. Now, all the transformations that you make are going to be saved in a list up here. So you can really easily um, just remove those or, or go back um, into an earlier version of this. Um, so, you know, very quick and easy to do these transformations. Um, other things that you can do here, we have an auto cleaning feature that you can click this and it'll standardize date formats, remove empty fields and things like that. Um, and you can also merge data sets as well. So we, we support an exact column match or fuzzy merges as well. So if you're trying to combine data from your CRM versus your um, other media buying platforms, you know, very easy to, to merge data sets right within our platform here. So now that we've got the data cleaned up, we're ready to analyze it. Let's go into the, the Explore tab here and show you how to actually chat with the data. So this is where you can use, use natural language prompts to do any sort of analysis. You can generate charts and tables, which can eventually be saved into dashboards. Um, we automatically generate a couple suggestions here. These are customizable as well. So if you wanted to uh, set up some questions that you know your clients may be interested in asking, really easy to customize this. Um, you can also uh, have the chat respond in a different language, only respond with charts. Uh, you could you can give roles here to say, you know, speak to me like I'm a digital marketer, like I'm a five year old, like I'm a uh, like I actually understand uh, very complex statistics. Um, and you can add an additional context in the data set as well. So if you want to make sure that your clients are speaking the same language, great. Um, now to, to get started, you can ask anything about the data set, but if you want to better understand the product first, you can say like, what kind of charts do you support? Having in front of an audience is always fun. Um, so just some quick answers here. You know, we this supports uh, scatter plots, line plots, area plots, et cetera. A list of about 20 chart types here. Let's say we want to see a report of spend by device for each placement. So now we want to get a little bit deeper. We want to see uh, do some do some filtering here. And uh, you know, you think of, of how you would do this in Excel right now. This would take about 10 minutes to just do the filtering. 
sum them up, stack rank these, et cetera. But here, just a quick bar chart um, with answers for spend across desktop and mobile for each individual placement type here. So you can just save this to your reports tab to hold on to check back in on it later. Um, but I want to put this in a table. So put this in a table. Depends on how you like to digest data. Some people like tables, some like charts, but uh, really easy to convert the uh, a chart into a table. I don't love the formatting here though. You know, I need I need commas and I need dollar signs. So add commas and dollar signs to the spend column. So you can see just with these quick prompts here, you can do a lot of the, the transformation here. Um, get things looking exactly how you need them to. Let's say, put this in a table. Should clean it up into this version I have up here. There we go, perfect. Big thing about LLMs, you, you might get a slightly different interpretation of the prompt here, but try it again. You're more likely to get the exactly how you want it the, the next time around. Um, let's see, what else? we want to do here. So let's see spend by campaign type over time for different time periods, right? So if you're building out a dashboard, you usually want to see what performance looks like for certain metrics over different time frames. So if I want to see what things look like on for the last four weeks, for the last two weeks, for the last seven days, really quick and easy to just generate these charts. And here I've got three line graphs now of spend of total spend for retargeting campaigns for on a weekly basis for the last four weeks, over the last two weeks broken out on a daily basis, and then daily for the last seven days, exactly what I asked for. So all of these can then be saved to your reports tab and added to charts, and uh, sorry, added to dashboards. But before that, let's do one more so we can see, you know, how is this gonna help with actually getting the insights that I need so I can just throw this into a presentation for a client because we all know not everybody loves looking at charts, so sometimes we need to write this out in plain English. So if I ask for a paragraph summary comparing spend and conversions by device type, this is going to give me some great information. So you know, when comparing spend and conversions by device type, we observe the total spend on desktop is 260K, on mobile is 250, average spend per conversion. Here we go. This is great to just get like copy paste right into a client presentation get it out to them. Um, so, you know, the work that normally would have taken probably a good hour to, to sum up all of this, get all this in charts, write up the summary here. You know, you saw me do this in about two, two and a half minutes. So massive time saver here. And more importantly, this enables anyone to do data analysis. Again, I am not a data analyst. I'm a salesperson. But if I know the right questions that I need to ask, then you know I can get some great insights here. Even if I don't know the right questions, you can ask the you can ask our tool. You know what should I know about this data set, and it'll give some good recommendations of where to start probing. Yeah, Justin, I just wanted to interject there and point out and really emphasize something that you just said, which is this opens up a level of capabilities on the agency side that we come from the agency world, marketing AI Institute spun out of an agency, and looking at this. Yes, you're absolutely right that this would take an hour plus to pull this data. Uh, and this is pretty simple. If a client, you know, is breathing down your neck asking for this stuff or more complicated data, this could be taking hours of your day. We would create performance reports like this manually or, at, you know, assist it a little bit, but not to this degree. And it would just take hours and hours each month. This ability to not have to train someone to be an absolute expert on data analysis, especially in the agency world, uh, it, it would be an invaluable superpower to give your agency. Yeah, absolutely. It, it empowers everybody on the team um, in, in two ways. One, to do things that they couldn't do, but now also on like the data scientist side, now they can focus on the work that they were hired to do because they don't have to do some of this client analysis that now the client facing teams, the media buyers and planners can do. So, you know, it, it unlocks a lot of opportunity across the entire spectrum. So the folks that work with the data can get the most out of it. And the people that were hired to do the, the like core competency, competitive advantage type data science work can focus on those projects. It's a great point, Mike. So for, like I mentioned, any reports that you're generating can be saved to your reports tab up here. So this is just a running list of all the reports that I've generated. Um, one click here to build a dashboard. So really easy to take these reports and, and build a dashboard for your customers. 
I'll show you what this looks like here. So, you know, one dashboard I, I had built, um, you know, just a quick high level summary of different campaigns with all the data. And then kind of you're running, you're running lists of data over time for each campaign broken out by spend. So you can see spend for all different campaigns, all time, last 30 days, last seven days, same thing for ROAS, same thing for CPA. Now, these are the same types of things that you see in a lot of your dashboards, but you know, really easy to spin these up for any customer that needs the same type of reporting that doesn't fit into your really high level metrics dashboard. So awesome opportunity to create standing dashboards for one-on-one -on -one with your customers or just, you know, hey, here's a couple of quick things I found. Let me slap them into a dashboard and just share it out with you. So all you gotta do is click share, copy the link and send it out. This, this again, this can be embedded within any tools that you're using right now in an iframe. Um, so very easy to just incorporate this into your current tech stack as well. All right, so going back into, into the data set we're working with here. So, um, you know, from a, a campaign optimization standpoint, you know, a lot of times we're stuck with optimizing by some upper funnel metrics, like total, total impressions, views, clicks, et cetera. Um, we're stuck optimizing by each individual uh, medium we have to buy through. So optimizing in Facebook, optimizing in Google doesn't always help paint the entire picture for you. So if you want to get a more well-rounded view of what's going on across all your different campaigns, if you can get the data in here like this, then really awesome opportunity to build predictive models around what's going to work. So in, in this example here, I've built a campaign to focus on, uh, to predict ROAS. Um, now again, dummy data here, 42% accuracy, may not be anything to write home about, but you know we do show you very cleanly um, uh, our, our predictions versus actuals. We're gonna give you a sense of what type of models that we're using here and other models that were considered as we were building this out. Um, we support uh, some, uh, some open source models, some proprietary models. We do ensemble model building. And uh, after we pull out the highest performing model, we show you the driving factors that go into all of our predictions. So what we do here is we're really cleanly showing you that spend, uh, the total campaign spend has the biggest impact overall on ROAS of the campaign. And even more importantly, we can see where spend starts to have a negative threshold. Like where is that point of diminishing returns where we need to stop spending a little bit? Because now we're seeing a, a decrease in ROAS. So here you can see if it's under 83, great. This has the, the, the highest impact on ROAS. If it's between 83 and 94, still positive. But once we hit 94, we start to see a drop here. So something to keep in mind as you're, as you're setting up your next campaign. From an ad type standpoint, you know, lifestyle ads do well, product ads do well, infographic, not so much. So let's let's like phase out some of the infographics and focus more on the ads that are generating a higher row as. Device standpoint, not a huge difference between the two. So let's keep an even split. And from a placement standpoint, we can see GDN, Instagram do well, Facebook, not so much. So really good insight. So you can like uh, you can take this information and you know just more deeply analyze what has worked historically. And then I'll show how to set this up to, to predict campaign performance moving forward. Uh, the top factors that we service are just going one click deeper. And some of this information is shared in the the, the tab here versus down here. So this looks at spend when it's in a very specific range. So this has the highest overall impact on ROAS. Um, and this goes a little bit deeper for each factor for all the different uh, fields that are in the prediction here. We will also do uh, some segmentation. So this is a separately run clustering algorithm to show the densification of certain fields and where they're showing up in more dense pools for a high, medium, and low uh, prediction here in terms of return on ad spend. So for a high row, as we can see that uh, the uh, the campaigns do well on Instagram with spend of around 75 uh, featuring products on a mobile device. So this is this is your sweet spot. This is where you're going to see the highest row as. Conversely, on the flip side, when we see that spend is, is a little bit higher on mobile, on Instagram, using infographic ads, this is where we're seeing the, the lowest the lowest combination of factors um, with the combination of factors driving the lowest row as. So, um, you know, some, some very, very useful information here for your team to use to just understand what's going on in these campaigns and then subsequently optimize around them moving forward. 
we also will provide some sample rows here to show uh, how we how we uh, how our estimates stacked up against actuals here. Now, once the model is built, we can we can host the model here. So you can see, um, sick. So as you're predicting what to do moving forward, we want to see what performance looks like at, with with some of these different factors as we're we're trying to optimize and set up the next round of campaigns. So a retargeting campaign on Facebook uh, on a desktop spend of seventy five lifestyle ad. The predicted ROAS for this combination here is thirty six. Obviously a great row as, but um, again, dummy data. Um, but let's change some of these and see what the impact on row is going to be as we look at some different combinations of these factors here. So increasing the spend decrease row as here. So we wanna maybe put spend back down a little bit. Let's change this to a product ad. Remember there wasn't a, a huge in, in, uh, uh, a huge difference here, but you, know, you can see a slight difference in row as here from product to lifestyle ads. We wanna look at um, Instagram as a placement here. We can see uh, a, a change in row as here. So, you know, as, as opposed to doing a lot of sort of old school testing, doing you know, your typical A-B testing, seeing what works, what doesn't work, putting ads out into the wild, and then removing the ones over time that are not performing well, that's wasted ad spend if you're able to predict what's most likely to work. So you can use this to, to kind of flip the script on how you optimize campaigns, get a better understanding of what is most likely to work before you put those ads out into the wild. So really awesome opportunity to, uh, to eliminate wasted ad spend and just get smarter about how you're setting up campaigns moving forward. And again, this is something that anybody can do. Don't need a data science background. If you're a if you're an account manager or media planner or buyer, then you know, really easy to, to set this up. So so that's that's the that's the product at a high level, you know, so to to really sum things up. To, to win more clients and, and better engage your current clients, you can use Accio to add in AI powered data analysis that makes it really easy and accessible to just go from what question I have, what insights can I get out of it? Uh, you can clean your data and explore it using natural language prompts and build machine learning models with no code. So get really important done work done in a fraction of the time. And all of this can be embedded within your current tech stack. So trying to build versus buy, Really easy to just add this in. Um, so you're adding in self-serve tools for your customers to make sure they're on the cutting edge of technology. And so you know they can chat with their data instead of going to you and make, the, make those meetings between your customers just way more productive. You want more time to chat through strategy and product recommendations. You don't want to be nitpicking over campaign performance. So you know, eliminate that, make everything more productive moving forward. So that's it. That's Accio. Um, the QR code I've linked here, if you want to take a, 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 a pic of this right now, it's going to take you to the Chat Explorer link that I uh, had showed before. So you can actually chat with the data set that I was working with uh, throughout here. So if you guys want to play around with that after the Q&A, go right ahead. Justin, that is awesome. So we'll leave that QR code up there for a second. Um, we're going to actually dive into some questions. I, people have a ton of really great questions here. I know I have some. That was fantastic as a walkthrough. So thank you for thank you. doing that. Absolutely. I'm not going to tackle these questions in order because I actually think there's a couple here that might help set the stage um, for some of the other ones. So I'm going to kind of cherry pick these as we go. But first up, let's kind of zoom all the way out to how Accio gets the data that we're looking at, because there were questions around, you know, are there popular CRMs, email, SMS providers that Accio integrates with directly? You showed a bunch of possible integrations. Could you just maybe double click on that idea for us quickly about how Accio, Accio gets all this data? Yeah, absolutely. Let me actually just pull up that integrations tab real quick. That'll help here. Um, a couple different data warehousing tools like Snowflake and Google BigQuery. Um, we have uh, integrations with Google Analytics 4. Um, Google Ads should be out, uh, I wanna say any day now in the next few weeks for sure. Um, Google Sheets is also a live integration we support. A couple of different SQL servers, um, Salesforce and HubSpot as CRM platforms. Not all of these we can deploy back out into just yet, but all of these can be used as import sources to pull data into Accio. 
Okay. So when I am signing up or getting set up here, I'm basically connecting just like I would with any other integration, connecting my say HubSpot account. We use HubSpot for instance, mm -hmm. and then my data will begin to populate within Accio. Is that how it works? Exactly. Yep. So once you okay. set up that integration, it'll pull in the fields that you want to, and then um, you can do any sort of like filtering and, and clean up from there. Um, so yeah, it, it lives in Accio. We make a copy of all data that's stored in a secure S3 bucket. Um, and that data is never shared with anybody else. So it's, it's, it's specific to your team. So nobody outside of your team, one can access it obviously, but two, the data is not actually shared out to inform any other modeling, any large language models. And none of your data is shared with the large language models that we actually, um, we only share metadata about the data set and use the large language models to generate um, pandas and Python code to apply directly to your data set. So because LLMs can't actually do the math themselves, we use the LLMs to generate the code to apply directly to your data. So that's why we can work on top of any kind of data set. Um, and it, it ensures that all of your data stays secure within our platform and never shared out with anyone else. Yeah, I know we had talked about that's probably going to be, you know, such a big concern that people have is, is the data safe that they're using, especially you have tons of client of uh, customers that are using this with clients. So it sounds like everything is perfectly safe and secure, no matter kind of whose data you are inputting into the platform. Exactly. And from a compliance standpoint, we are SOC type two compliant, HIPAA compliant, GDPR compliant. Um, and um, yeah, obviously security is the, the number one thing for us here. So, um, you know, happy to chat in a little bit more detail with anybody that uh, wants to have that conversation. So oh, someone asked, and I was curious about this myself, you know, can I create any type of like dashboard templates or report templates? So like if I'm, you know, an agency and I'm pulling the same type of report for a client or a dashboard for a client on different types of data, can I do anything related to that? Yeah. Not yet. That is on our, our near-term product roadmap though. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we'd love design partners for, for something like that as well, but uh, it, it definitely is. It's on the, the near-term roadmap. Cool. Now I had a question more about just setting the stage for the need for a tool like this. I mean, we've seen obviously data visualization tools, um, tools to help you get more out of your data, but I really feel like we're changing the game here when it comes to applying AI to your data. You talked up front about this issue of like the skill gap that you're seeing among your customers. Can you talk a little more about that? Because I think it's like really helpful for people to understand we're not necessarily saying go put your best data people on this highly technical AI tool. We're literally saying you can start giving data superpowers to people like myself that are not trained data yeah. analysts. Is that right? That's exactly right. One of the main things that we hear, especially from agency partners, is that the people that are working with the data on a regular basis and trying to explain the data to their clients don't know how to get the most out of that data. And to put it really candidly, don't understand how to how to even read charts. So I think the, having the ability to one generate those charts, but then also just ask for what's going on in the data in paragraph form, so you can take that and either one learn from it and you know up upskill your your own game or translate that to your customer goes a really long way. So it it, it creates this this massive opportunity when everyone becomes more data competent and um, it, it allows the, the people that are very data savvy to work on much bigger projects. So it unlocks a lot throughout that entire skill spectrum internally, but also externally as well. Allowing your customers to chat with their data that you've kind of wrangled and, and compiled for them, of course, um, that creates a lot more opportunity to focus on, on big picture stuff and, and not get like into the weeds on what happened in this campaign. Why is my, my performance down, et cetera. So as we're talking about, you know, Accio can integrate with a number of different tools and correct, you can upload, you know, just a spreadsheet or whatever as well, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, so you, you can upload a spreadsheet. So if, you know, if you're working on, if, you, if you've got like programmatic data with hundreds of millions of rows, you can bring that into Accio. Or if you've got 20 rows with high level campaign performance that you just want to quickly summarize and build some charts around, throw that Excel into Accio and, and start asking questions. So that kind of comes into a distinction here where if I'm 
connected through an integration to like HubSpot, for instance. I'll just use that because it's the one I know best. My data is updated in real time, correct? Because of that integration. But if I'm uploading a spreadsheet, obviously that's static. So we're yeah. not getting updated data with that. Yeah, great question. So uh, CSV, Excel, those are static files. Those will not update. But any other live integrations, including Google Sheets, will update on a nightly basis. Okay. So that uh, all the data in the underlying uh, data sets that we're integrated with will update nightly. You can set models to retrain on a daily basis as well. So your models are constantly retrained with the most refreshed data. All of the reports and dashboards that sit on top of those live data sets will automatically update as well. Um, and um, yeah, so once those models are live, you can you can run any new inferences through those models as well in real time to get deployed back out into either a data warehouse, a, a Google Sheet, however you want to deploy those back out. Cool. So one other feature, especially coming from the agency world, that was really interesting to me is your ability to essentially white label Accio. Could you maybe talk a little bit more about the value of doing that? Because if you're an agency, you're not just telling your client necessarily, hey, we have this cool tool called Accio that we're going to use to analyze your data quicker. You can actually be building, it sounds like, services or value adds around Accio. Yeah, exactly. We have small consultancies using Accio for kind of any and everything. And we have some of the largest agencies in the world that are embedding our, our chat tools into their own dashboard. So their customers can chat live with their own data. Um, and uh, so the, the, the pieces that can be white labeled are the, the chat feature, the predictive model insights, the predictive models themselves. So your customers can run new inputs through those models and our dashboards. So Dashboards and chat can be embedded right within your, your own customer facing dashboard. So your customers um, have kind of like a one-stop shop for everything they need or their, their clients. Um, and it all looks like your tools. Um, I think a, 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 it's part of an even broader conversation around how agencies are monetizing their services in the world mm. of AI. Yeah. Are you working all the hours that you're saying you're working now? You know, that, that's, that's up for the agency to decide, but it's 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 your technology, or at least it looks like it's your technology, and so your customers or your or your our agency clients, their clients are just seeing an extension of their own tech stack. Yeah, that's definitely worth emphasizing for anyone who just hasn't, you know, really taken the time to sit down and understand AI's impact on the agency world. It's going to be and is is already monumental. I mean, it is transforming how agencies think about strategy, billing models, creativity, services, everything. So when I look at something like Accio and the ability to white label, you know, the chat feature and bring that to clients, that is incredible to me because there's so many businesses out there that are desperate for the types of insights that generative AI and these tools can give them that either A, have no idea what's possible or B, have no idea how to do it themselves. So agencies being able to bring this to the table feels like a massive win to me. It is. And and there's there's another added element to that as well around, you know, just how much time your employees need to spend on each customer now. Um, mm. you, you, you can go from a oh man, my client just emailed me at five o'clock on a Friday again, like there goes my weekend to, hey, I can actually support a couple more clients here now that I have these tools to speed up a lot of my really tedious work. So, you know, it allows, it allows um, you know, all employees at an agency to save a little bit of time, focus on the things that matters, and then ultimately onboard more clients because you can support mm. it now with some of these tools. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, in terms of some of the, a couple other data questions. First, can we do anything at this stage with unstructured data, like reviews or anything like that? Not yet. Um, so we we solely work with structured tabular data right now. Um, unstructured is probably a next year roadmap kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't see or I didn't note, yeah, on the integrations list. Do you integrate with Google Search Console or any plans to do that or? Not yet. Um, Google Ads, yes, very soon. Not yeah. Search Console. Um, gotcha. We do have a, a GA4 integration right now, but um, not Search. Gotcha. 
And so that's kind of a bigger point here. It sounds like we've obviously been talking about using AI to unlock insights in ad data performance. Can we be using Accio for other types of data if we want to through some of these integrations or through data that we upload? Sure, absolutely. If you're trying okay. to understand site traffic, if you want to understand your own customer uh, yeah. buying patterns, likeliness to churn, lead scoring, you know, agencies are are the the main focus and who we're building the product for. But you know, it's nice because a lot of these tools can be used for any sort of large data problem, sentiment analysis, mm -hmm. um, understanding customer. Um, uh, customer feedback, better uh, social media mentions, competitor information. So, you know, any any kind of like large data sets that you have, you have something that we can predict on and you have historical data, super easy to spin up a model. Yeah, that's incredible because I feel like this is such a pain point that every organization deals with because really what we're talking about here is the alternative either, I mean, the alternative is you're just digging through spreadsheets and different systems, right? Yeah, spreadsheets, any any kind of like legacy BI reporting tools that you have, um, or relying on on data scientists to kind of build their own models, which you know is going to take uh, days, weeks, months to to even build, and then even more time to maintain. So we take all of that off off the plate for you. Um, one use case I didn't mention as well is is forecasting. You know, we can mm -hmm. do time series forecasting for forecasting anything. You know, we have logistics companies forecasting shipments at different ports throughout the world, forecasting um, demand, supply, et cetera. So forecast anything you've got the numbers for. Yeah, that's kind of a point we haven't talked about as much. We kind of have focused on, you know, rightly so, the fact that you can suddenly get all this very fast data analysis that's highly accurate and takes very little effort or skill to get at. But then that's kind of the time savings with our existing data analysis work. AI also is great at unlocking things that we couldn't do before, like making predictions. So really the alternative there would be unless you are literally building your own machine learning models, which you may be, and if so, awesome, good for you. But many organizations, I don't even know if they have the ability to make predictions from their data, right? Like it'd be a human saying, here's what I think might happen based on this data. That's about it. Am yeah. I correct in saying that? Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. A lot of that predictive power kind of sits at a, at a really high enterprise level and with some of the giants of um, Google, Amazon, uh, Facebook, mm. et cetera. So unless you're in that world where you're paying a, a fortune for that kind of work, you don't really have access to it. So this opens up, uh, a lot more room for that predictive work for the the not like top 1% of companies that can pay for tools like that um, or have the the staff to do that kind of work. Um, and it also helps to, to kind of reframe the entire BI environment that you're working with. So if you're looking at Excel, any former dashboarding tools that I don't want to call out specifically by name, um, a lot of them are adding in some AI features, but I think being an AI native platform like ours allows us to, to really build more features on top of the AI instead of trying to, to slap AI on top of some some older, older types of products. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. I think someone asked a question about that. We don't have to get too in the weeds, but I'm curious about how is this, what is the landscape looking like with something like Accio versus, you know, like a Microsoft Copilot, some of these companies that are, you know, have useful tools, but are kind of really just baking them over one simple platform? Yeah, I think it's it's a good point. I think the 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 over one specific platform is is the major call out there. If you're mm -hmm. not using Excel or 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 Microsoft products, you can't use Copilot. Um, from what I've seen from Copilot, it's still kind of in that in that more like generative AI world and not necessarily like generative like data an, uh, analytics analytics. Yeah. So it's still a little bit. Um, it's fantastic, but it's not really for this specific use case. I think if you look at Somebody asked about Tableau AI. Tableau is a, a great product and I think has um, more advanced capabilities in terms of connecting like different data streams and, and, and aggregating all of that into, into one source. But, um, and I know they're adding in some, some new AI and, and chat features, but, um, you know, I think uh, 
that's that's one part of the equation that we help solve. You know, we can do mm -hmm. the dashboarding and the predictive side in one platform and the data transformation. So they serve slightly different markets and use cases, but there's going to be some overlap for sure. Yeah, definitely. And it's pretty interesting you use that term AI native because we at Marketing AI Institute for a while and in everything we teach, we talk about this idea of AI native and AI emergent companies. Both are amazing. Like we want companies to either be built from the ground up with considering everything AI can do or existing companies that start baking AI in. But that's where some of the differences come in that you see, I think, in this market where it's like, some of the players that have been around for like 30 years, they have legacy businesses. They're layering AI on top of it, their products. There's nothing wrong with that. They can do some cool things. They're worth checking out. But something like Akio is built from the ground up to say, okay, what would actually be possible if we had AI for data analysis from the get-go, right? How does that change everything that we think we know when it comes to approaching data? I love that just transformational approach there. Yeah. And when you think of the history of our company, we've been around for about three and a half years. And before ChatGPT came out, um, we were primarily on the predictive side. We built out our auto ML engine and, and that's it's it's incredibly powerful. And from a performance standpoint, stacks up against the giants I mentioned before, Amazon, Facebook, Google. Um, we ran head-to-head -head tests and, and compared uh, better, faster than, than all of them. Um, mm. But we recognize the opportunity to do more with that. And we were actually using large language models um, before GPT became very public to do the data transformation because we recognize that a lot of the people that want to do the predictions don't have the clean data that they need. So we built the data cleaning tool. But we also then recognize that people don't really know what's going on historically in their data. So why would they try to predict what's next? So we added in the LLM capability to analyze your data historically. So to your, to your exact point, as we identify more use cases, it's easier to build on top of the AI capabilities that we have. And we now have this very well-rounded view of, of the entire analytics environment from data importing and cleaning to exploring to predicting. Um, so the product has evolved really significantly in, in just the last you know year to 18 months alone. And to your point, like we can keep building on uh, additional use cases as they come up. Yeah, that's really exciting. And that's kind of a thing we often talk about as well is really finding companies like Accio that you can kind of bet on that have robust technology that is updating and evolving and adding new features in this space as we go. Because I hope one thing that kind of comes away from this conversation for people is I would honestly sit down this week if you're an agency owner or higher up at an agency and sit down and really think about on a blank piece of paper, like what does the agency of the future look like? And it probably has some type of data analysis AI like Accio at the heart of anything it does with data, because we're not just talking about saving time here. That's awesome. That's helpful. But this really does just require a rethink, it sounds like, like baking in sophisticated machine learning into and on top of the data that your clients have and the data that all these platforms you already pay for and use and struggle to get insight from, uh, the, all that data you already have there as well. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's a great point. And Accio makes it really accessible and uh, I'll say affordable to to get started and 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 try some of that stuff out. We offer a free two-week trial. Um, user licenses to start at $49 a month to do predictive work, to do the, the chat exploration. So, And our pricing scales up as you start to add on more use cases, more users need more data. But um, you know, if you're, if you're envisioning what you want your agency to look like a year from now, um, and it, it looks amazing, everything's automated, and your clients get notifications when any, anything that they want happens, um, that's a great vision. But, you know, that's going to take some baby steps to get there. And Accio is the perfect platform to get your feet wet with the data ex exploration, building predictive models and getting this in front of your customers as quickly as you can. That's fantastic. So a couple other just kind of small questions about some of Accio's features, availability. Is it available outside the United States at the moment? Yes, absolutely. Available everywhere. Okay. Um, from awesome. a from a language standpoint, the uh, everything in the platform is native English, but 
using the chat tools can be uh, can be translated to any language. Cool. And in the QR code you provided, does that include like the original dummy data that you were using, or is that just kind of like using chat with the data? How does that work? I think someone had a question about that. Yeah, that would be that would be using chat on top of the specific data set that we were walking through. Gotcha. Um, okay. They can't, you can't download the data or anything like that, but you can you can ask questions about it, and that's how that would look if you're if you're white labeling it for your clients as well. Okay. Gotcha. Fantastic. So. Justin, as we get to kind of the last few minutes here, I do want to just like pull this all together and kind of ask you, so you're deep into the advertising world. You work with a lot of agencies, you work in sales. What are you seeing in terms of how marketers, advertisers, sales professionals, anyone in our kind of line of work, like what do we need to be thinking about as professionals, as business owners, as leaders? I mean, it's a big question, but still, what is kind of the advice you find yourself giving people who are trying to navigate this new normal? Yeah, I, I posted about this on my LinkedIn, one of like two posts I've put out there in the last like 10 years. But um, when I when I think about like coming out of college, like I learned how to use Excel in college. And I thought to myself, like, if I could get even decent at this, this is going to give me an advantage in everything I do. Um, I think that rung pretty true. And when I was at Admiral, I was pretty good at using Excel to do a lot of that data analysis. I wish I had a tool like Accio back then, but <laughs> I think, um, understanding what's what tools exist out there that are going to make you better and make your uh, client relationships more effective is is always worth spending time and investing in um and again we make it easy to at least just try it out put your data in accio and and, and give it a spin um but I, I think for 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 any marketer it's important to understand what tools are out there to help you save time to help you uh, help you get better at what you do and, and make your clients happier. I think even if you don't know how to do data analysis, starting to use a tool like Accio, it's going to get you the answers you want, but you're also going to learn how to ask the right questions, which is, is just as important in data analysis as getting answers. So I think um, it's a massive educational opportunity for anyone. And these are tools that you know your customers are going to be asking for with by the end of the year at the latest. Um, so I think the early adopters are the ones that are going to have a, a much bigger advantage moving forward. And that's a fantastic point. Yeah, it's interesting I even find myself as, again, someone that's not great at data analysis natively, using tools like this, I'm spending more time saying, what other questions should I be asking? That's really the human strategic element that I see the huge benefit in having more time to do. I'd rather have more questions than less instead of having to mess around with data, manipulate spreadsheets, et cetera. I can actually sit back and think, what is a smarter question to ask? Exactly. And you can like the, the nice part about having a, a, a chat bot like this is you can have that conversation with them. You know, what are some yep. reports that I should be thinking about here? What are some less common reports that one might think about pulling from here? Um, what else can I add to my data set to make this more robust? Um, so there's there's a lot that you can do and just like just having a conversation to, to learn a little bit from what is actually just a really savvy data analyst in our chat bot. Um, so you know, it's you can you can learn a lot. You'll you'll pick up a ton of shortcuts along the way, and just figure out how to spend less time doing the really tedious work and more time identifying. If you're at an agency, how do you win more clients? How do you make the clients that you have happier? So, um, a lot that you can get out of this than than just some answers. Wow, that is an amazing wrap up here. I mean, everyone, I I don't know about you, but I am thrilled to have been able to see Accio in action. Um, just so many ideas and possibilities now um, that I've got buzzing around. So Justin, thank you so much for walking us through this. We're at the top of the hour here, everyone. So we are going to let you get back on with the rest of your day. Thank you all for your time and attention. I hope you got a ton of value out of this. Please do not forget to check out Accio at akkio.com. Justin, thanks again for all the insight. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Mike and, uh, uh, and AII for, for, for having us here. Uh, it was, it was fantastic. Really appreciate it. All right, everyone have a great rest of your day until next time. Cheers. Take care.